sometimes something particularly egregious would happen, would be said or would occur. And so I would call him and he'd say, yeah, he crossed the line with that. I'll talk to him. So I'm in my bedroom one morning and my husband comes in and starts yelling, why is so-and-so, name the pastor, why is so-and-so texting me? I went back to the pastor and the minister of discipleship and that key elder, all three separately, and said, is it abuse? And they all said, yes. And I asked the minister of discipleship, I said, did I cause this? And he, he said, Kathy, how could you ask that? And I said, well, y'all haven't done anything about it, so I just wonder if y'all think it's my fault. Kathy, welcome back. Uh, I'm excited about this as we're going to get into the church and what happens when you seek church support when you're going through the things you went to. So um, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's go. So we talked about that a little bit in the uh, last podcast, but when you got into marriage that you and your husband were both believers. Mm -hmm. Did you attend church together? What did you see in him in those when you're dating in that first part as far as where you thought he was in his relationship with Christ? Um, one of the things that I appreciated the most was he was involved in a ministry with the job that he had uh, with some of the co-workers that were there. And so my heart was really toward ministry. I was on mm -hmm. staff with the biblical counseling ministry. I had felt that was really the big picture for my life in whatever capacity, but that yes. it was some level of ministry. And so that was something I was really drawn to. Yeah, I, I bet. Went to church together. Did you went all to pick out the church you went to together, or how did we you find We met there. Okay, that's where you mm -hmm. met at the church. Mm -hmm. And so everybody at the church was supportive and all that kind of stuff. I suppose so. I didn't take a poll. <laughs> <laughs> didn't go through. Uh, but church was a regular part of your life. Yes. Together. Uh, yeah, yes. In the marriage. How long were you married for your first child? Uh, a year and a half. Okay. Okay, so you had a... It was about, pretty quick. Yeah, pretty quick. Not mm -hmm. that much time before you mm -hmm. got pregnant and went through all those kind of things. I think you were in one the class that I taught one time. You were pregnant, and mm -hmm. you would leave the class every once in a while because <laughs> it was uh, morning sickness or things yes. like that were going yes, on. Yes, I was, I was pregnant a lot of times, and I was always sick. And you're always <laughs> sick. And so so um, as, as you... Things begin to unfold in your marriage, and you begin to realize the problems you're having. Uh, did you seek help from your pastor, your church leaders, and then how did they respond to you? So within the first year, year and a half, I'd gone to her minister of discipleship because he was the main person that did any kind of counseling. Okay. <clears throat> so he had known from very early on, not that it was abuse, but that we had problems. And then over the years, sometimes something particularly egregious would happen, would be said or would occur. And so I would call him and he'd say, yeah, he crossed the line with that. I'll talk to him. So you were kind of keeping him up to date with things. And it might be one time a year. Okay. Um, but I would let him know something, something that would happen. And an interesting point with that is I have, I trust him. So when he said he let, he would talk to him, I assume he talked to my husband. But I never knew that. There was never a point where my husband came back and said, and again, I will reiterate, I am divorced. He's my ex-husband, but right. I'm not going to phrase that constantly. Um, where he would come back and take ownership of what he had done, ask for forgiveness. That didn't happen. You had no not, idea whether not, he not one time. to talk to him or not, not one time. because from your husband's standpoint. Yes, which is... A significant oversight you know if there's never repair being done for something right so that's important even if it's not abuse if it's just marriage issues you know? yeah yeah um, so the church I was at which I was there for 32 years and it was a pretty good sized church right yes yeah, several yeah. hundred people yeah wonderful Bible teaching um, I greatly valued a lot of things about it and one of the pieces of the church, um, what would you call it? It's not the statement of faith, but uh, bylaw, bylaws or whatever, mm -hmm. um, the church governance is the idea of church discipline, which is in Matthew 18. Right. So I'm fine with that, right? Uh, they talked about it very openly. 
regularly, regularly enough that you wouldn't, you couldn't be there long and not know and about not know it. That this was part of what right. they believed and how they would handle things. Yes, um, always very graciously when they talked about it. It was the idea of stepping into someone's life, coming alongside want someone, things like that. I had seen it handled a couple of times, um, which I can look back now and realize were for sexual sins. Um, Okay. And there's just two times over the years, because what I found out is a lot of times when they get into that process and the person withdraws their membership. Leaves. yes. And so we'll so they don't have to come. Right. You can't tell me what to do, and so exactly. I'm leaving. So there was, when you become a member there, that is one of the things that you're kind of agreeing to. Not this big, horrible thing. So I don't mean this in this wildly legalistic thing. It was in what sounded like a very biblical sure. situation, which it was. Yeah, so you, I, I, you do I, something I, and we come alongside you. We're going to hold you yeah, accountable. Yeah, Res, you, know. you know, restore someone who's going off the wrong right. direction, that Try kind of thing. Them. Yeah, so I have a lot of respect for that. That was not bothersome to me. Yes. Um, so, uh, you know, as I said before, it's like 15 years in before I realized my marriage was abu uh, abusive. And then I go on from that learning I mentioned the power and control wheel. That was really significant to me. I listened to some podcasts that, from a, all from a Christian perspective, that really clarified for me what was going on in my marriage. And so I hit a point. I did go to the pastor one time and let him know because my mentor, Christian counselor, had actually called him and said, this is going on in this couple in your church. And so she had told me that she'd done that. I found out later that another very respected Bible study leader in the community had actually contacted my pastor. Okay. She had just heard different things I'd said here and there. And because there was some abuse that she had dealt with within her own family, not her personally, but you know, when you know what to look for, you know what you see. Sure. And so she had called him actually. So he'd heard it twice. And then I went in. Um, and told him was not ready to do anything about it, but had this feeling because I had a pretty strong sense of church and spiritual authority and everything, and let him know. So knowing that church discipline was part of the, the doctrine um, or bylaws, whatever, governance, I need to say, um, that had always been the nuclear option to me. That was something where I knew... If I ever started it, A, things were going to get a whole lot worse before they got better. Mm -hmm. And B, it was just going to blow everything up. So that was not something that I wanted to do. And so I had put it off for mm -hmm. 25 years, probably 23, 25 Long years, time. something like that. Yeah, so the, the thing that changed it for me was one of my kids who was in college at the time, uh, my husband and I were out with a few of our kids, um, and I, we were at a restaurant, and I was at the counter ordering. And I come back to the table, and my daughter is sitting there, just tears welling up. And we'd taken two cars, and she said, I need keys. I'm going home. And I, this is unlike her. She was not a uh -huh. crier. And, you know, I'm a mother, so I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but I said, well, I'm going with you. So I start driving her home. And she tells me about a really cruel encounter that had happened while I had been at the counter. With her dad. What, yeah, uh, the way her dad had spoken to her and what he had said and some things like that, um, which this was a pattern. So she's cried all the way home. We get home, she's still crying. Again, that's unusual for her. And she says, why won't anyone help us? Mm. So... I said, I will go get help. So that was the turning point for me. Um, so I went and met with the pastor, senior pastor at the Minister of Discipleship, uh, a key elder who I had gone to him and his wife, and they knew our story. They'd heard from one of my kids. So there was kind of collaboration. So your older kids were also saying things. Yes. Um, and then the, one of the church secretaries was in there because I asked her to come in. I thought that would uh, maybe provide a measure of accountability. Um, and then my counselor came 
because she had tried to meet with us for some time, so she had seen it. Um, so it was not hearsay. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, well, Kathy says this is happening. She she'd seen it. She'd seen it plenty. Um, so we all met, and they decided Matthew eighteen that everyone confirmed this is abuse. And so my pastor, he said, well, I should go first by myself and contact him uh, and talk to him, my husband. Um, so I said, you need to let me know before you do that because it's probably going to be ugly. Because you, yeah. 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 I mean, no there's always the chance that he would be like, oh, my goodness, I had no idea. But I, I'd said too many things too many years yeah. to, to assume and nothing had ever been resolved. So I did not have a lot of hope for what that Get initial that was, situation, sure, how that was going to happen. Well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not a lot of hope for it going well, for sure. So I said, you need to let me know. Um, so I do remember my pastor uh, us running into each other or something and him saying, I emailed him a couple of times. I haven't heard anything back. Maybe he didn't check his email. I'll try and text him. Okay, I need to know when you do that. Okay, so I'm in my bedroom one morning, and my husband comes in and starts yelling, why is so-and-so, name the pastor, why is so-and-so texting me? And I initially I said, I don't know. I mean, I had no idea what he was talking about, because what I meant, and maybe I didn't make it clear, was you text me and say, I'm about to text him, you know. Right, give me a warning. Um, yeah, I need a warning. Again, I'm the one who has to live with this, yes. right? Uh, I said, I don't know. And he said, what did you tell him? And I thought for a minute, I was really proud of my answer, which is super funny, because when you hear it, you'll be like, that is not a strong answer, Kathy. But it was, given what Where I was feeling inside, time. was terrified. And what did you tell him? And I said, I told him what things are like around here. And he said, I don't have time for this, and went storming out. Well, so that's a good answer. Thank you. I like that Isn't answer. It, wasn't it good? Yeah, I, I do like that answer. Literally, work of the Holy Spirit, because yeah. I was terrified. Sure. That I could string that together instead of being like, I'm, 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 I'm. You're right. You're right. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, to this day, I remember the word and was like, I was proud of that answer. That was good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, I don't know when he ever met with the pastor. I have, I don't know how any of that went. Nothing. Nobody I, gave you any feedback. Nobody gave way. me any feedback. There was a point where weeks went by and I literally run into my pastor. I'm walking in a door, he's walking out of kind of thing. Um, and he said that he had spoken to my husband after he had preached a sermon on dying to self. And he said, I saw him and, and, and also just ran into him and said, you've got to show her something. And at the moment that struck me wrong, it was like I was grateful and it was kind of back to the, all the confusion I've had over the years where I'm pretty discerning. And so, you know, I'm like, something's off with this. What I later realized is like, no, we're not saying you got to show her something. We should have been calling for godly sorrow, brokenness, repentance. Right. Um, not, a, not a behavior modification. Yes, not a behavior modification. Not something. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> Everything. Uh so maybe I met at some other point with them. I, I can't even remember that because this is going on for months. The whole right. process went on for like four or five years. Um, wow. So there was a point then where I met again with my pastor and this elder. The elder was also my husband's Sunday school teacher. That wasn't why I did that, um, why I went to him. But there was a lot of, there was some connection yeah. for sure. So I just met with the two of them. I think my counselor had offered to come. I'm like, no, this is fine. So we met. And at that time, my pastor said, okay, so side note, obviously I've not seen any change. Right. Okay. Over this yes. long period of time. Yeah. And, and there's been no apology or acknowledgement or anything. I, I mean, even my husband's not coming back and saying I met with so-and-so or anything. I have no right. idea what's going on. And nothing's really changing. Nothing, and not nothing's changing. Not escalating, but just not changing. Yes. Um, some of the tactics changed, and I'm not sure I wouldn't say that, they, that there was not escalation. Okay. 
uh, the contempt was very much there. Okay. Some things went a little more underground, maybe. You know, it's, it's hard to quantify. It was still really bad. Yeah. You know, when you go from uh, miserable to horrible, can you tell the difference? I'm not sure. You know, <laughs> exactly. I mean, the, the, the scale yeah. was a little skewed at that point. Yeah. So I'm meeting with the pastor and the elder. And the pastor, he said, well, I went and talked to him. And then we went and talked to him. I don't know who the we was. And so he literally looked at the elder and said, I think it's time we take it to the elders. And the elder said, I think so. So I said, okay. I mean, I can even feel it in my chest now as I tell that story because it was super terrifying. If I thought it had been bad so far, I knew this was the grenade. That this um, was the next step for them. They had talked to him, no response, and now we're going to bring it to yeah, the so elders. Yeah, so we'll bring it to the elders. Okay. So there's literally no other way to take it in that environment than that in church discipline. Yeah. So I said, you need to tell me before you talk to him. Okay. We go on for days, I think longer than that, because I actually reached out, and I can't imagine doing that unless it had been several weeks. But I remember I was actually in Texas coaching a basketball tournament, and I stepped out of the tournament um, to text the elder. Because, side note in all this, two different times during this interim, from when they said they're gonna to talk to him, and when I talked to the elder, uh, in this situation, I'm driving one of my kids to something and I've had to pull over to the side of the road, open the car door and throw up out the car. I'm a wreck. No kidding. I mean, I, oh my word, I'm a wreck. I don't know whether I've just, well, I do feel like I've blown up my whole family, which there was nothing more important to me. Um, it was horrible. And so, and I'm hearing nothing. So I contact the elder and he's like, oh, yeah, his wife had been really sick, um, and he was supposed to be involved in all this, um, which, I, you know, technically they all should have been involved in all this, but she'd been, I mean, actually hospitalized, so I'm not making light of that. I'm like, okay, you'll have to tell me. <laughs> I Nothing. never hear anything. Six, seven months later, I finally went to that elder and just said, did y'all ever talk to him? He goes, yeah. Did, did no one ever tell you? Yeah, I, I, we may have twice. Yeah, we may, I, it may have been twice even. So I knew nothing. Wow. So I'm continuing in the church. Um, and I visited another church with one of my kids and just loved it. Not, not a church out of town. It was like, oh my goodness, this felt so good to... It was just a different feel from leaving church. I didn't feel all the shame, which mm -hmm. was not my church's teaching, but because of everything connected to it. Sure. Not thinking of divorce. No one is mentioning a divorce. In fact, I think that may have been mentioned that very first meeting to make sure you're not thinking of divorce, are you? No. I haven't, no. Just want this better. Not even remotely. Um, yeah, just want this better. Yeah. Please don't tell me I'm not living like this the rest of my life. Yeah. So I actually left the church... I was astounded when God gave me freedom to do that. Uh, the LPC that I had seen before, I was talking to him about it. I'm like, can I do this? A couple of my kids and my husband are still there. And he said, yes, yes, you can do this. Um, so he helped me craft how to tell everybody what I was doing and stuff. So I left the church. And when I did that, I wrote a letter of resignation. No, that was not necessary. But you did. <laughs> so it's not like, well, you have to do this. That w it was important to me, though, because church is very important to me. It had, it had yeah. been all my life. Church membership was important to me. And I didn't know where I was going to end up, you know, whether I'd be someplace even that had membership or not. Sure. Um, but it's like, I want off your role. I want to make this clear. So I wrote a letter, which I still have. It was a gracious letter. There was no, you all did this. I had, so it was not... It was not in response to, well, you all won't support me. It was not. It was, I need to go someplace where I feel fed. Um, there were just too many blocks sure. being there. So, and in it, I actually said, you can tell all the elders over. I guess, so I guess it's been three years at that point, because I remember saying, you can tell all the elders over the last three years, because like two rotate off every year and two new ones wow. come on, that kind of thing. 
because I assume that this has been, you know, they've all been to discussing this every every month in my mind, quite frankly. I mean, truly. Because yeah. uh, it's a big deal, right? This is abuse. Absolutely. We've all confirmed this. This is a big thing. Um, so he responded back and said, well, all, I won't be telling all the elders because all the elders don't know. Like, how do all the elders not know? Um, so that was weird. I, I, I couldn't really make sense of it. There was a little part of me, this will sound weird, but was a little relieved by that because I knew these men, the 14 to 18 men that have been, been over the last, last three years. They were friends of mine. Mm. They all knew me. I had taught their kids. I had taught their wives. They had been, you know, whatever. Everybody could say hi to me. There was no sense yeah. that these are random people that I don't know. A lot of them are my contemporaries. And I couldn't believe they would, that all of them would just let this keep going on. So, okay, well, that makes a little more sense, but it doesn't. So I actually went out, well, a little before this, I went back to the pastor and the minister of discipleship and that key elder, all three separately, and said, is it abuse? And they all said, yes. And I asked the minister of discipleship, I said, did I cause this? And he, he said, Kathy, how could you ask that? And I said, well, y'all haven't done anything about it, yeah. so I just wonder if y'all think it's my fault. Because crazy things go through your head. Absolutely. Um, and he goes, no, it's not your fault. And so I used a very strong illustration with him, but that went along the lines of, all y'all have asked him to do is sin less. You've not called on this for repentance. Um, so then I went out with that elder and my dad, because I thought, I want answers. I, none of, this is not adding up. We were there when they said, we're going to take this to the elders. How does everyone not know? So we went to a coffee shop, and I just peppered him with questions, and I let him know, my dad's coming. I want to know what happened. So answers, answer everything. Yeah. You know, was it abuse? Yes. Um, did you all say, we're going to take it to the elders? Yes. Given our church bylaws, could I have thought that meant anything other than church discipline? No. Was this church discipline? No. Somewhere within that interim, too, I'd spoken to another elder. I, and I was, this is, again, three or four years, so I'm not running around right. doing stuff. I'm so trying to live my life and survive. Um, and I'd found out that the word abuse had never been used with the elders. So I said, did... You all used the word abuse when you told the elders. No. They were just told to pray for us. Wow. Yeah, so that was staggering because, again, we're taking it to the elders. How could that mean anything else? So I said, so the take-home is that divorce is worse than abuse. And there's not really a response you can give to that one. Um, and I said, so abuse is not grounds for church discipline? No. I said, so is it only adultery? And I don't remember whether he really responded to that or not, but I said, you all need to rewrite your bylaws then because it needs to say we practice church discipline for adultery or for sexual sins because if that's really the only thing, people need to know, know because it. other people are going to be coming to you for help. So I even said, ah, how did this thing happen? I, and I listed some of the most egregious things that had occurred. And some of them had been within like the last, while, while they had known, while the elders mm -hmm. had known. And said, you know this, yes, you knew this, yes, you knew this, yes. My husband had moved out of my room like four years prior. You knew this, yes. I went through all these different things, again, with my dad sitting there. Because um, I just, I couldn't make sense of it. I still can't. Right. It didn't make sense. Um, they did know we had gone to counseling, the, the counselor that had been made really meaningful to me. Um, my pastor had known that we, that we were going to do that. They didn't follow up with me. Uh, maybe I was supposed to schedule an appointment on my own with the pastor and let him know what was going on. I don't know. It was never asked what was going on with that. But it, it was... 
it's just it's just mind-boggling really yeah i can't make sense of it so yeah, it's it, very it's hard to get a ha how, where do you get a handle on something yeah. like this and, and i feel pretty confident they would have a different take on all this which is why i'm only giving facts sure these, good. these are the things. I mean, I can show you, you can check my email, you know, or my phone, all, all those kinds of things. There was, there were never yeah. follow-ups and stuff. Wow. Um, so I learned a lot from that, that I really want churches to understand. And so I was, I'm sure, patient zero. So maybe they're doing fantastically well in dealing with this now with other people.